everyone, welcome to Group Text. Today, I've got someone who I've known for, Jesus, a long time, and she needs no introduction. So let's get right into it. Luann DeLespis. Is my, have I ever said that right? No. <laughs> have I ever s- pronounced it correctly for me? It's Delaseps. Just let it roll off your tongue. Delaseps. So nobody says it right. Well, no, you know, if people try to separate the DE, that's when you have problems. But if you just say Delaseps, it runs very smoothly. Okay, so Delaseps. I should, after all these years, no, I'm <laughs> making you very fancy. Dula. Dula. I'm, add, I'm adding a whole new thing. <laughs> well, you have given. You always call me Countess. That's why. The, well, we'll get to that, madam. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the most memorable moments throughout 13 seasons of The Real Housewives of New York. She's feuded with the best of them before finally taking the center stage spot during the show's introduction. My guest today needs no introduction. Someone I've known forever. So let's get right to it. Countess Luann Delezbeth. Yeah. You have given up some of those most memorable moments throughout the 13 seasons of The Real Housewives of New York. You have feuded with the best of them. We have so much to discuss. Welcome to Group Text. Oh, thank you. It's good to see you, Melissa. It's been a while. It's been too long. So, yeah. okay. I need to ask this because I feel like I need a flow chart. <laughs> are you or are you not a countess again? Because you had to give up the title when you were married to Tom and clarify because I didn't know you could reinstate. Well, they, well, you know, it's a courtesy title that, you know, listen, I have two kids. I was married for 17 years. I married Tom and I divorced him that rather quickly. So it wasn't old. And um, and so, you know, the countess is really it's like my hashtag. It's just a part of who I am. It's a you know, it will always be a part of who I am. I'm still called Della Seps. Uh, the count is still alive and 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 roaming around the planet. And um and he, you know, he he wants me to ha- keep my title. Uh, you know, God knows he wished I didn't marry Tom, but I did. Um, but I, you know, I got I got divorced seven months later, so it doesn't count. <laughs> I love that. Explain to people what a courtesy title is. Well, a courtesy title means that um, as a courtesy, uh, you're allowed to keep the title like uh, Fergie. You know, she's Duchess Fergie, right? Uh, she's not married to Andrew anymore, but she keeps the title as uh, the Duchess. So um, it, that's what's called a courtesy title. Out of courtesy, after being married for 17 years and raising his children, <laughs> I get to keep the damn title. And I would say I deserve it, Melissa. Well, more importantly, do you still get to use a little coronet on the top of your stationery? I, you know, it's part of my logo. I mean, it's part of my brand. It's part of who I am. It's like I said, it's, you know, it's like my hashtag. Right, because it's very, it's it's really hard to actually get an official crown on your stationery, and it kind of seems to me that it's worth it just for that. Besides having your children, and then and then the good stationery matters. Right, and and so I just want to tell you because most people think you know the Countess title comes from some Cracker Jacks box. You know, the Delaseps, you know, actually were responsible for the Suez Canal, the Panama Canal. They gave the Statue of Liberty to America. Uh, for the French. So when it came time to give the statue, it was Ferdinand de Lesseps that actually handed over the statue from France to the U.S. So it's a very important name in history and and one I'm very proud of. And, you know, uh, like I said, we've been married for a long time. We're still friends. We have children together. And so um, so he uh, is very happy that, you know, I use the title. And um, and so that's all that matters to me. See, I so I would be looking at the Statue of Liberty and saying to my child, "Do you see that? <laughs> that is ours. <laughs> yes, we donated it, but you should feel a sense of ownership." <laughs> if you actually go there, it's in all the you know the history books, you know, because it was like a, a very big moment. It was you know under uh, Napoleon the Third, I believe, that when the statue was given. So it's like it's you know it's a big deal and. Um, and uh, rightly so, you know, the biggest diva of them all is the Statue of Liberty, right? Oh, correct. But I, just the fact that you're deep and know the history, yeah, now you're boring me. I'm much more, <laughs> <laughs> much more shallow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mine. Uh, <laughs> let's talk housewives. <laughs> exactly. So you starred in season one, episode one. 
which is crazy of Housewives of New York, which I believe was in 2008. You guys were the first spinoff, basically, in well, the Housewives well, there universe. Was, there was the OC, to give them credit. The OC was the first one, and then Housewives of New York came second. Well, I was like, you were the first spinoff. Right. Right. So, um, yeah, we've been around a long time, longer than Sex in the City, Desperate Housewives, and all of them. Because it was such a new franchise at the time. Yes. Did you have any idea what you were getting into? Had you seen OC? Or it, it wasn't like this monster, the OC. Right. right. No, it was the very beginning. I mean, I you know, we got paid literally nothing for it as, you know, the first uh, season. And it was, you know, a... Uh, kind of a test season and a pilot season. And, you know, we didn't expect it to take off the way it did. Um, you know, I started on the show with Jill Zarin and, you know, from the very beginning and, um, and, you know, who, who knew it would be around for this long or that it would be, you know, become such a franchise. How was it explained to you? I mean, when you, first of all, how did they even hook up with you and how did they explain the show to you? Well, I mean, at first it was called Manhattan Moms and it was a nice little story of all these women and our lives in New York City. And, you know, my background was in television. I used to work for Italian television. I lived in Milan before um, I married the Count and I um, I was a showgirl in Italian television. I was a co-host, I was a host. I was doing a lot of different television shows. So that's my background. I met a woman called Jill Zarin at a party in the Hamptons. And she said, I'm doing this show called Manhattan Moms. And I think you'd be perfect. And it, so it really came to me. Um, and it was explained that it was Manhattan Moms. And if I had known it was the OC, I don't know if I would have done it because, um, you know, I don't think I would have done it actually if I had seen um, what it was actually going to be. But I, you know, I did. I took a leap of faith and I'm so glad I did. did. Were you prepared at all? I mean, nobody is for the you be, becoming as famous as fast as you did and it becoming this, you know, during your seasons, this cultural phenomenon. Yeah. You know, no, we, you know, we weren't expecting that. You know, like I said, it was a pilot. Uh, and you know, I took a leap of faith. Uh, I'd never done reality. I'd done. No one had really at that point. Nobody had really done reality. I think the only thing around them was like Queer Eye, um, with Carson Kressley at the, back in the day. And so it was fairly new and it was a new kind of medium for me to work in. So, um, so yeah, I, you know, I said yes. And, and before you knew it, it was season two and season three. <laughs> and now we're season going into season 14. Which is ridiculous. But yeah. do you remember the first time, at least here in the U.S., that someone recognized you? I would say it was probably at the airport. It's always my- the airport. I, I, it was. It's always the airport. <laughs> well, because you have people from all over, right? So, um, and, you know, my kids were with me and we were going to Switzerland uh, because, you know, we used to kind of live between there and, and here. And. Um, and you know, people came up to me and, you know, the kids were like, oh my God, mom, you know? Oh, and so, yeah, I remember it was the airport. That's so funny. And it catches you, you like look over your shoulder. Like, are you looking at me? Yeah. (laughs) Well, they came right up to me and said, are you the countess? And, you know, um, so it, you know, it was, it was surprising, uh, to me and I still, get surprised. Like I was walking down the beach in Miami and I was with a friend um, and we were just taking a walk down the beach and I look up and there's a paparazzi, you know, down the beach with a long lens. And I'm like, damn it. You know, cause I forget, you know, I really forget sometimes cause I'm just, you know, I'm just a regular girl really. And, uh, and so I'm, I'm always surprised by the amount of uh, attention that I get because of the housewives. Well, the show has been a part of your kids' lives. Yes. For a long time. At one point, and I've, I went through it myself, and I still watch my son go through it a bit. There's a lot of cringing. Yeah. There's yeah. Well, a lot of cringing. My, my, my kids weren't on the show a lot, a lot. I never really had my children a lot on the show because, you know, I signed up for it, and so I just didn't feel like, you know, at a certain point, you know, that 
uh, the kids needed to be a part of it, especially when it kind of made a shift. You know, it was it, it changed a lot over the course of the years. Uh, and, you know, my son a long time ago said, listen, mom, you know, I love you, but that's your thing. You know, especially the boys, they're not that into it. My daughter, I think, has been on it more than he has. Um, but yeah, there's the cringe worthy moment of, you know, Noel uh, taking, you know, um, uh, hip hop lessons, <laughs> you know, uh, God, do you look at my hair and you know how kids are, they're very critical of how they look, et cetera. So, um, but I, I must say, you know, I've been very protective of my children on the show, so I don't have them on a lot on uh, just once in a while you get to see them. See, and for Cooper, it's the same thing. And for me, it was definitely the same thing uh, in that we weren't really out there, but it was more about your parent's behavior that or what your parent was saying out there and everyone coming to you school at the next day and going, oh my God. And like, I mean, that's where the real cringe. Oh my God. When I did the music video for Money Can't Buy You Class, I had this sexy dress on and I was laying on a bed surrounded by men without their tops on, you know, with their yeah. you know, fabulous looking bodies. And my son was, oh my God, you know. And uh, I said, listen, Noel, it's a music video. Look at Madonna's music videos. I mean, this is nothing <laughs> I remember. And, and he goes, you're not Madonna. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, you know, he's gotten over it and he's, you know, he's um, he's 26 now. So it's a, you know, He's 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 grown to understand that that's my life. And, you know, he lives his life as an artist and uh, doesn't want any part of television. It's not his thing. It can't be easy bringing a date home. <laughs> yeah, right. It's a little intimidating. We're going to go meet my mom and you they know so much about you. Yeah, I, know. I know. I know. Well, there's always a little bit of eye rolling going on, you know. Oh, I'm glad to know that yours is 26 and still rolls his eyes. Yeah, you're not alone, darling. Some more from, well, he's only 21, and I, it's, I'm it's i so excited to find out that there's more years of eye rolling ahead, but then I think about my relationship with my mother, and yeah. man, the eye rolling never stopped. You and the original New York cast, you've had some very public ups and downs, and one of which, which you've been incredibly open about, is your struggle with sobriety. Mm -hmm. When did you first, and I have so many friends who are sober a long time, and I, I find that those ones especially are the ones that still 20, 30 years later work their programs. Yes. When did you realize you had a problem? Um, Probably, uh, you know, through the years of, you know, parties and drinking on the show, et cetera. And, you know, and the show is, you know, listen, there's always alcohol around on the show, but nobody's forcing you to pick up a drink. So let's put it that way. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, people all, all often say, oh yeah, you know, being around that and whatever. And sure. It, it makes it that much harder. But um, I would say, you know, probably when I had my little kerfuffle in Palm beach and I went to the wrong hotel room and then, <laughs> and then Oops, got my up. bad. <laughs> My bad. Oops. Yeah. Well, you know, again, you know, uh, does I, did I deserve to be arrested for being in the wrong room? Probably not, but it was a wake up call for me, um, that I didn't react the way I should have that, um, that I got into, you know, trouble for it. And so that was really a wake up call for me. And, you know, and since then, you know, it's, it's been a journey, you know, I take it day by day, um, you know, and, and it's not perfect, but it's, um, you know, I'm sober today and that's the most important thing. And, um, and I'm so happy, you know, I, I in turn, you know, started a Fosé brand of non-alcoholic sparkling that, um, I'm recreating. I just, I sold out of, of the, <clears throat> of the recent batch. So I'm working on a new one and, you know, so, I, I, you know, I, I've just gotten so much more done and creatively and cabaret and all the things that I do. Um, you know, there's a certain point where drinking just doesn't work the way it used to. It used to be like, oh, I'll have a hair of the dog and I'll feel better. But it, it just stopped working. And so drinking is not um, something that that works for me. It's very personal. And I feel like people have their own journeys. And, uh, and for me, it's, you know, I just so much happier and better off without alcohol. You know, I always feel like there's so much added pressure for people in the public eye when they're right. going through their sobriety journey. Yes. Because 
every single slip up yeah. becomes news. That's right. I would f- think that that pressure alone would make the journey even more complicated. Well, I mean, <clears throat> it, it is in a way. And on the other hand, <clears throat> it kind of keeps you, um, <clears throat> it keeps you kind of on the straight and narrow a little bit because it's like, you know, the minute you think about having a drink, maybe somebody's going to see me having a drink <laughs> and then I'll get in trouble again. So, you know, it, it, it's kind of a deterrent almost, if you will, you know, uh, for me, um, you know, and listen, I, I filmed many seasons of the housewife sober, uh, the ultimate girls trip was sober. I have a new show coming out with Sonia that will be out in the spring. Um, and I'm not drinking. So, you know, I think there's always pressure. There's always a liquor store across the street, you know? Uh, so people say, you know, being around the housewives and all these parties, listen, I can walk across the street and buy a bottle of booze if I want to. I live in New York city. So, you know, I, I wouldn't say that, um, I would say it, it is more difficult because you are in the public eye and every, you know, mistake you make is, is public. Um, and so that can be more difficult, but on the other hand, you know, it, it kind of is a deterrent. And I, and I look at when I see all the sloppiness of people <laughs> they drink, that's also a deterrent, you know? Yeah. And, and I'm very lucky, like socially, um, I can have a good time without drinking. A lot of people aren't that, lucky because they drink to be socially more, you know, interesting or looser or more relaxed, et cetera. You certainly, you certainly don't need alcohol to be those things. No, no. <laughs> and in fact, you know, in filming the ultimate girls trip with Kyle, you know, Kyle said to me, she's like, Oh my God, you're so much fun. I mean, and you don't drink, <laughs> but you know, I must say that trip was great because a lot of the girls don't really drink a lot um, from those different franchises. So so that was okay. Um, but, but anyway, yeah, it's, you know, I take it day by day and nobody's perfect. It's progress, not perfection. I always say last month, people magazine reported that you lost weight. You feel the healthiest you have in a long time. What, what, cause this is more than just being sober. What do you credit this healthy lifestyle well, I mean, listen, I, as soon as I quit drinking, I dropped like 10 pounds. So that definitely helps also with, you know, uh, clarity and all that. And, you know, listen, I, I'm, you know, I followed like a Mediterranean diet uh, and, and, you know, and I'm active, you know, I do yoga, I do, you know, I'm a spiritual person. I do a lot of like Kundalini yoga and meditation and all that stuff. I think, you know, health really starts from, um, the inside and how you feel about yourself. Um, and I feel like, you know, having clarity, not being hungover. I never wake up and go, Oh damn, I wish I had a hangover. Uh, yeah, you know, no, nobody thinks that nobody thinks that. And so, you know, just all of those things put together, you know, I think just, uh, living a healthy lifestyle and being active. Uh, and you know, look, my mother's 93, she's going to be 94. So I'm very blessed that way. And, you know, um, so I, 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 I would say it's holistic, you know, uh, it's a holistic approach to health and well being, And that keeps me trim. Okay. One more question before we pivot to what I am so excited to talk to you about, about being a cabaret performer. <laughs> yeah. we got, I got to ask though, you've been vocal with your criticism of Bethany Frankel and her podcast and, um, how she's revisiting old seasons which isn't uncommon for podcasts. What is it that upsets you? What do you think isn't right about her doing that? Well, um, <clears throat> the reason I got so upset about it is because that when Bethany went off the show, you know, she tried other shows and they didn't work. And then she came back to our show. Then she got off the show again. And then, you know, she would do appearances and she would not even say the word housewives. You know, it was so far behind her and she was so up here and we were down here to quote Kelly Ben Simone. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, Kelly's, you know, Kelly is hilarious. She poo pooed the housewives, poo pooed the housewives. And so I just feel like, you know, and here she comes again back to the housewives in order to keep herself relevant. 
And that pisses me off. As my mother always said, remember what the storefront is. <laughs> yeah. And that's her storefront. That's her storefront. But, you know, off of our backs and all the hard work that we've put in over the years um, and with no accolades from her, it's always been, you know, she, you know, she's tried to, you know, do other shows and tried talk and she's tried, you know, another reality show. And, and, you know, when all else fails, she comes back to the housewives. And, you know, I personally, uh, think it's kind of a, it's, 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 a, it's, it's kind of pathetic at this point that <clears throat> when you poo poo the franchise and, um, <clears throat> and, you know, won't even say the words housewives, and that you come back to it, it, you know, I, um, I just find it a little offensive. So now let's talk about something not offensive. <laughs> Your cabaret career. Um, I got to right off the bat, how hard, okay, first of all, New York Times, brilliant reviews across the board, the harshest critics, huge rewards. You are critically acclaimed. Did you always want to be a performer when you were little? Was Broadway your dream? No, no, not really. I just, I've always, you know, I grew up in Connecticut and since I'm a teenager, I thought there's got to be more to life than this. And I, you know, I would eventually, you know, I, I went to nursing school. I'm a nurse by training. I, um, I entered a beauty pageant because of another nurse that was working with me. And she said, I won't go unless you come with me to make a long story short. I didn't place in the Miss Connecticut pageant, but I got scouted to be a model in New York. And that would then take me to Europe. Um, and that would then open the door for me in a career in television in Europe. Um, I used to work for Italian television. Uh, and so, uh, I've always been a singer. I've always liked to sing. Like I was always the girl at the party that would sing. Uh, and so it's just a passion of mine that I, I love. Um, I'm, you know, I, I love to write music. I wrote, you know, I write all of my music um, from money to chic to Viva La Diva to my newest Christmas song. What do I want for Christmas? Um, and so it's something that I enjoy personally uh, and I think that's what really plays out when you come to my cabaret shows. It's, you know, it is personal to me and everything that I sing is personal to me that um, I've been singing for a long time. So, you know, the fans of the show, you know, grew up, you know, with their moms watching Housewives. So the music that their mothers know, they listen to as kids. And so the 20 somethings and 30 somethings know every single lyric to most of the songs that I do in my shows. And that's what I want. I want the crowd to be able to sing along and have some fun. Um, and that's how I come to choose my, um, my music for my shows. Uh, so I'm passionate about music, always have been. I write my own music. Uh, and so Cabaret um, just was an, a natural kind of next step for me in terms of um, my career. And, you know, I, after I fell on my face uh, in 2017 and got into trouble, I was working on a cabaret show at that point. And, and that's when, you know, my director called me and he said, you know, do you still want to do this show? And I said, yes, I still want to do the show. And, um, you know, it was not easy because here I am going to be totally judged, you know, uh, and but I took the opportunity to do what I like to do, created a cabaret show. And I, you know, I just didn't know how it was going to go. I mean, I was terrified. I mean, I, the first show I did at 54 Below was not only my first show, but it was filmed for Housewives. Oh, so, dear God. No pressure. None. Uh, and so I couldn't remember anything. I, I, I was about to go out on stage and I said to my makeup artist, I can't do it. And she said, yes, you can. You're ready. Go. And I got out there and, you know, after five minutes, I'm totally comfortable, you know, with the audience, because like I said, it is my own. I create it. It's not like there's a director saying, sing this and sing that. Everything that I sing and everything I perform um, really comes from me. And so it's a personal journey, really. It's a, it's a personal story. I, 
you know, I show clips of the show that, that I tell stories around. I sing music around that. I do a Q and A with the audience. I take things like, you know, for this Christmas show, I take songs like lay down Sally. And instead I do lay down Santa. And <laughs> so I, I take Christmas and kind of turn it on its head in a different way. Um, I do, you know, I really immerse myself in the moment and, you know, and, um, and the fans love it because it's really, um, they get to spend time with me. And on, at the same time, I, you know, I have a real rapport with the audience because, you know, we, we talk and we, you know, they're, they're totally immersed in, in the show. So they feel like they're a part of it. And also my fans have so much in common because they love the housewives. So they become friends. They go to dinner after they meet once a year to come back to the show. You know, it's like a thing. It's like a pop culture thing. So it's not only cabaret, it's like pop culture meets cabaret meets fashion show. Because, you know, I've got to wear those Giovanni dresses. <laughs> and I got to say, they're pretty fabulous. So, you know, I, there's a lot of stuff wrapped into it that really makes it a fun experience. It's really so much fun. People come away have, having had the best time of their lives. And, and you know, and they'll say it. They're, they're like, that's the best show I've, I've ever been to. And, and I they love it. So I'm, I'm really be, feel very honored to be able to bring that kind of... Um, show and joy to people because they just leave with a huge smile on their face and have had the best time. So that's the best I can, can ask for. Um, you know, it, there had to have been part of the nerves had to be about preconceived notions like, Oh, here she goes. Giant eye roll. Yes. When the New York times gave you a good review, which is, mm -hmm. you know, for theater and cabaret, sure. it, it really is a seminal moment in your career. Mm -hmm. How did you find out about it? Who told you? You know, my, so I, um, the first show I did at 54 Below, the director of Kristen Chenoweth and Barbara Streisand was there. I didn't know that. He's a fan. So he came to me after and he goes, Countess, I got to say, not only can you sing, you're funny and you wear a dress like no one I've ever seen. You're going to become a big star. I, you know, and so he kind of took me by the hand and led me to, you know, a great touring agent who, you know, took my show and, and gave it a, um, you know, a Live Nation, uh, you know, touring, uh, you know, schedule. I mean, I, I just feel very blessed because I feel like I was doing what I wanted to do. I was in the right place at the right time and I had the right person in the room. And so, you know, that really was a big moment for me and to have the nod of New York times to have, you know, people like, you know, Rachel Dratch was in my first show. Um, uh, Bridget Everett was in my first show. You know, Lance Bass has been in my show. I've had major, major talented people um, and stars in their own right, you know, come to perform in my shows, you know? Um, so that feels really good. You know, after, you know, the hell I've been through <laughs> to be able to get on stage and perform and do what I love to do, because I really do love to perform, um, is it means the world to me. And to have the fans there who are so supportive, I always say, you know, I could trip and fall and they would say, Countess, that was so elegant, you know, <laughs> love, you know, there's so much love in that room. Um, you know, I've inspired them somehow, you know. By, I think, you know, by falling down and standing back up, I've had a lot of that in my career, you know, and I think that everybody can relate to that, you know, because, you know, the countess, you know, I'm very relatable. I, you know, I grew up with a big family. I'm one of seven kids um, and I'm very down to earth, which most people don't imagine. But when they come to my show, then they go, oh, my God, you know, this is this is, you know, this is who she really is. And that's what I love to bring is like, um, you know, you only get to see, you know, minutes of me and in, in what is cut by Bravo, you know. And so I just feel like when people come to my cabaret shows, it's like, wow, you know, she really because, you know, listen, on the show, you can't really play music rights and all of that stuff is very complicated. There I, uh, there's some there's a very funny show on called Reboot. And there's an episode about, or part of an episode about licensing music. And it's like, here, just pick something from that's public domain. And she's like, I can't do, 
you know, whatever it was. 1920. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, people who live their life on the road, and especially performers, and I saw this with my mom, and I know this from all the years I was on the road, not just as a child, but as an adult working. A, there's funny habits because you're living for that moment where you're on stage. So it makes it worthwhile. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, start with that. It makes it worthwhile. But everybody develops little funny habits to make wherever you're staying on the road feel more consistent and more like home. For, so for example, my mother always slept with the TV on. And it was always had to be on specific shows. It had to be on Forensic Files or Uh, Law and Order. I mean, it had to be, be, and I always used to say, why? And she goes, because it's the one constant. Right. Oh, interesting. And and I had my my little weird things. Even if it's like overnight, I have to unpack my bag. You know, I have a thing where I have to put my, you know, toiletries out in a specific order and I have to put my shampoo and conditioner in in the shower as right. soon as I get there, so it's there and I don't have to get out. Do mm-hmm. you have, because you're on the road so much, I was looking at your touring schedule, have you developed any of those little idiosyncrasies? Are you even aware that you've developed? Them? I think I have all of them. <laughs> <laughs> I've got all of them. I have to put my shampoo and hang up my clothes and you know, before I can do anything. And I'm like your mother, you know, I tend to kind of fall asleep with the television too. Um not on purpose though. It's not like I put it on because I'm, you know, but, um, but yeah, I, you know, I, I travel generally with the same kind of clothing. I mean, you'll, you'll know. My mom did the same thing. It was black and just stuff that went with black. Black and super comfortable, but super elegant, you know, always. I love to travel dressed. I never, you'll never see me in sweatpants or anything like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's like my mom. I feel like, you know, if, and, and I do that for myself in any case. I've always dressed as if I was going to meet Mr. Right. <laughs> Walking out of the house. So, you know, because I feel like today, especially, you can get really attractive looking clothes that are super comfortable now. You know, it's yeah. not like the old days where, you know, that stuffy suit was like so hard to travel in. And so, but now, you know, things are so comfortable, at least what I travel in. And, um, and so... You know, I, I would say, yeah, I, I like to move around um, in my black travel outfit that's super comfortable but super chic and I uh, have my shampoo in place and, of course, my statement necklaces uh, <laughs> ready yes. to go. And um, and definitely there has to be a good TV in the room. Yeah, so those, those and my and yeah, my mom used to also move the lamps around so that the oh, brightest I, I the, do that. But, you know, the bright, so the brightest lamp was where her on her night table so she could read. I used to make appearances with your mother sometimes on Joy Behar's show. Yes. So I got to meet her, you know, several times. I mean, God, she was fabulous. Yeah, as, fabulous. For, as for looking nice all the time, my mother used to say, most people only meet a star once in their life. Don't disappoint them. That's right. And and that's part of uh, why I, you know, I, I do what I do is that, like, for instance, when I perform, you know, I say it's part fashion show because I change because I want to, you know, bring a different look and bring a different wow factor to the show, you know, and um, and I want to bring that to when people meet me in person. And I have to say, every time I meet people in person, they're like, you look so much better in person than you do on the show. And I and I say, I always say, you know, well, I, I think I'd rather have it that way than the other way around. <laughs> yeah, I, and- I, get, I get that a lot, but. It's still like, well, thank you. I'm not sure. <laughs> it's, Which, it feels like a backhanded comment, right? Very much so. And and you know what I love is because of that, when my fans come to the shows, they dress for the occasion. They're in their sequins, their best outfits, their statement necklaces. You know, they show up for me in a real way. And that's a beautiful thing. What's next? Dare I even ask? Once you're off the road on this current tour, which goes through, if I looked properly, February? Yeah, February. I'm, I just actually um, added three shows in New York City, uh, February 16th to the 18th. Um, in January, I'm in Foxwoods at the end of the month. Um, so yes, through February, and then I'll be working on a spring show. Um, 
and with new dates. And, you know, I'm, you know, I, I love it. I have a great time. I get asked all the time, aren't you nervous? And I'm like, I, I'm not sure. There's always a little pre, you know, show jitters before you get on stage, but I just love it. Like I said, I feel so much love from the audience that it's hard to be scared when you've got so much support. Luann, I love you so much. <laughs> you are a force of nature and you have a crown on your stationery. What could be better than that? That, right? And I will it, see you at my shows in uh LA. In, or the 16th. When am I the I'm in the 16th to the 18th and at the El Rey Theater. The El Rey is great. I love the El Rey. You have to come. I've got I've got a lot of celebs coming over. You have to come. I'm gonna do my damnedest. I hope so. I hope I get to see you. You are the living best. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks, Melissa. It's great to see you. Thank you.